of Sports Note for Tuesday, March 19th. Yes, I know, two and three days. Uh, and probably with the first round of the NCAA tournament starting on Thursday, uh, you're probably going to see a lot more of me here over the course of the next few days. Uh, but we talked on Sunday, just before the, the Wise Guys show, of Long Beach State getting in. Now we're going to talk uh, about one that actually happened the day before uh, that is getting a lot more run as as the tournament gets closer. Uh, and we'll jump right into it here. And that's the University of Akron knocking off Kent State in the MAC final, the Mid-American Conference finals. Uh, something a little, uh, little bit closer to home here for me uh, as Akron is about 45 minutes uh, away. Kent State is, uh, is just mere minutes away from Akron. The, uh, this is kind of the Midwest version, so to speak, or at least the Ohio version of the North Carolina Duke rivalry. These two schools hate each other. Um, the, uh, the last time I actually wrote about this rivalry uh, was taking a shot at Kent State. Uh, Akron fans love to go Kent read, Kent write, Kent State. And Kent State fans typically talk about uh, meth labs in, in Akron and, and drug use and everything of that nature. So, yeah, definitely hitting a little bit below the belt here. But the Kent read, Kent write, Kent State thing took on a little bit more life of its own than we can remember um, on Saturday night. Now, two years ago, these two teams met in the MAC final, uh, in the MAC finals, which Akron rolled over Kent State by twenty. Um, but it was that was brought on by what actually happened in the semifinals the day previously. Uh, Akron had uh, had already advanced, knocking out Toledo, and then Kent State had knocked out uh, Ohio University. Or I might actually have those uh, those backwards. Then Kent State, four uh, Kent State players basically recorded video and posted it to social media, Instagram, Twitter, etc., throwing uh, f bombs and threats at uh, at the Akron players. Three of them were suspended for the first half of that game, and one of them was suspended for the entire game and also suspended indefinitely, uh, meaning that they did not end up playing in their uh, in their NIT bid, uh, which allowed Akron again to roll over. Um, Kent State. Kent State got a measure of revenge the following year, taking out Akron uh, in the semifinals on uh, en route to winning the MAC championship last year and advancing uh, to the NCAA tournament. Uh, but with about ten or eleven seconds left on Saturday night, uh, Akron was clinging to a one-point lead. It was fifty-nine. Uh, it was uh, fifty-nine fifty-eight, and uh, Kent State heads down the floor. Uh, point guard misses a jump shot, uh, but one of their forwards is right there for a putback. Just kind of got behind everybody. Um, and it's now a one-point Kent State lead. And Kent State's uh, head coach is begging his players, back off, don't foul, even though both teams have, have a timeout left. Um, Kent State... I'm sorry, Akron inbounds and tries to push the ball up the floor. Kent State fouls. And both teams were in the bonus at this point. So instead of Kent State um, backing off and maybe seeing Akron either run for the last shot or or break the, uh, break the timeline and get a timeout uh, to set up a final play with maybe about three or four seconds left, um, they're shooting one and one now. And there's only about three or four seconds left at this point. Um, because when, when the basket was made uh, to put Kent State up one, there were only six seconds left. Um, so naturally, Akron hits both. They go up 61-60, and Kent State misses a runner uh, with no time left. And the uh, the gentleman's name um, who ended up making the foul. Uh, it was Cleron Hornbeck who hit the, the putback from Jalen Sullinger, uh, and then Julian Rollins was the gentleman who fouled uh, for Kent State, who fouled Akron's Greg Tribble in the backcourt, uh, and then Sullinger missed at the buzzer. 
Um, this is something, unfortunately, that is going to sit with uh, Rollins for the remainder, uh, quite honestly, of his life. Um, you could actually see the the uh, Kent State head coach beside himself, not so much with anger, but just in absolute awe and amazement that one of his players, you know, fouled um, when they didn't have to. And this is this is sending uh, Akron to the NCAA tournament for the second time in three years. Akron's going to get matched up on Thursday at 1.30 p.m. in Pittsburgh against third-seeded Duquesne, meaning that Akron, uh, not Duquesne, uh, Duquesne's going to come back here in just a minute. Uh, but they're going to be matched up with third-seeded Creighton. Um, and Akron is going to be looking to pull a massive upset here because Creighton is predicted by a lot to make a, uh, a lot of experts to make a pretty deep run in this tournament, um, possibly even getting further than, uh, than their Sweet 16 appearance last year, um, whereas Kent State's probably going to end up playing in the NIT here. I have not checked the NIT pairings just yet. Uh, but Akron's also going to be looking for their first win in the NCAA tournament in history. They're 0-5 to this point. Uh, it's also going to be their second appearance under head coach John Gross, who was the 2020 MAC Coach of the Year. Uh, and the Zips have actually put together six straight winning seasons, and the last three of those have accounted for 20 or more wins. Now, uh, now Gross was the 2020 Coach of the Year. That was also when it was... Um, that was the year that was canceled because it was the out. It was the outset of the pandemic, um, so it's gonna the the idea that also uh, Akron's gonna be going up a very good uh, Creighton team with the MAC Player of the Year Enrique Friedman. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see what uh, the kind of the Friedman versus Ryan Kalkbrenner of, of Creighton matchup. Now, Kalkbrenner is one of the best players in the country. Um, Friedman is a 6'7 forward from Cleveland. He's Akron's all-time leader in rebounds. He's second in school history in block shots. He ranks third in school history uh, in points as a senior. Uh, so he and Kalkbrenner, the loser of this game, will be playing their final collegiate game. Uh, whether uh, Freeman will be playing at the next level, whether he'll be in the G League, if he'll be playing internationally, remains to be seen. I think Ryan Kalkbrenner is going to definitely be uh, a, a NBA draft pick coming up later on this summer uh, after the after the finals end. Um, but the fact that Akron's last two visits to the dance resulted in a gaffe that Kent State made is just throwing more fuel onto the fire of this rivalry where um, you know, Kent State has kind of dominated in football in recent years, but now Akron's gotten the better of them with a conference championship on the line two of the last three years. So it's now another banner hanging up in their arena. Um, and Kent State, you know, ha maybe has an NIT appearance in there. Um, but I can't, it, unfortunately, you know, you got to feel horrible for um you know uh, for Rollins making the foul because it's automatically going to start bringing back ideas to Chris Weber uh, of naturally calling the timeout in the 1993 final when North Carolina didn't have any uh he cost his team a national championship Rollins cost his team a a conference championship um where it would have possibly been Kent State going up against Creighton uh, but for uh, for the Kent State coach to come out and back his player after the game, saying I should have taken a timeout uh, at that point with everything that was ongoing, um, you know, good on him. His teammates have got to be very disappointed. But yes, uh, they did get their uh, their NCAA tournament uh, appearance and their tournament championship last year. So it's not like the seniors on these on this team have been completely denied a trip to the big dance. So uh, we said we also want to bring it back to Duquesne here for just a moment. Uh, Gross took over for Keith Dambrot, uh, who was 
a legendary coach in the Northeast Ohio area for a number of years. Now, Dan Brod, um left Akron to go take over at Duquesne in 2017. Uh, but a lot of people forget Keith Dambrot was LeBron James's high school coach at St. Vincent St. Mary High School in Akron, Ohio. Uh, now, the Dukes are going to be heading into their first NCAA tournament uh, since 1977 when they're going to be matched up, I believe, against Dayton in a 7-10 matchup. Uh, I want to say that game's going to be on Friday. Uh, I, I'm sorry. It's going to be their, It's going to be a first-round matchup against BYU. It's still going to be a 7-10 uh, but Dan Brott also announced he's going to be retiring at the end of this season. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, is this just more fuel onto this fire? Uh, is uh, if if you're from the Cleveland area, are you more Kent State? Are you more uh, are you more Akron? Are you a Cleveland State fan? Are are you Ohio U? Uh, if you're a Buckeye fan, unfortunately, your opinion doesn't count here, and it really doesn't count when it comes to college basketball because all three of those teams are going to be playing in the postseason, and you guys stink. Um, so Mike and I will be joined by uh, the Four Horsemen on Saturday night. We're going to be joined by Alex of Row 7, our, our brother, um, and uh, and John Rice, our, our Cleveland brother. Um, we're going to break down NFL free agency. Uh, we'll look at some of the first round games, maybe talk some upsets here. Uh, but I will more than likely be back with you guys here later on this week. Take care.